It's been said, you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I say, do what you love, with the people you love, and you'll work harder than you ever have and love every minute of it. What do you think? Did you already give it to me. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I'm Sterling Beckman, a husband, a father. Let's go through and make sure it's ready to rock, okay? And third generation entrepreneur. It's that pinch point right there that you know, we gotta fix. I believe life's meant to be pushed hard with my friend Sherry Johnson. She's got a reputation for building guns. A killer eye for what's cool. What if this is like a tube top? Oh yeah, that would be good. And she always brings the fun. I hate peanuts! <laughs> Jason Hulls, he's designed everything from amusement park rides to award-winning hot rods. A guy that can dream it and make it as well. I'll bust it out, I'll do it All tonight. Right. The three of us celebrate an independent lifestyle. Knives, guns, race cars. It's fast. Oh wait, I gotta wash my headphones. And even some t-shirts. We make it all. Our recipe is simple. It takes horsepower, firepower, and willpower. This is a new era. Sterling and Sherry and I, we had a conversation early on, like what's our style? And the style that we brought into it was kind of a West Coast, SoCal, surf, skate theme. It's just fun. Right now, Era 3 sells a lot of guns. We also make knives, we make some backpacks, and we make some really cool apparel. Pretty calendars, beautiful women. Sort of an eclectic mix of products right now. And at the end of the day, I think Era 3 is just an extension of our lives in a business format. We've created a place, like an epicenter of cool and fun. You know, does that get in the way of, you know, truly working and assembling some goods or making things at times, you bet. We teamed up with Clint Smith, Marine Corps veteran and icon in the firearms community. It's called Project Anorexia. We manufactured some lightweight receivers, threw in a little carbon fiber and a few titanium parts. It's undoubtedly the finest AR in the business and we're going to debut it at a $10,000 weekend at Clint's Range. It's called the Thunder Ranch Experience. No pressure. Did you choose a pink tip for your welder so you could get in touch with your feminine side? I totally did. That was a special request. I knew it. Project Anorexia, right? We dubbed this idea of building an ultra lightweight battle rifle for Clint Smith. You know, we went together to build this rifle. We simply made an adaptation to lighten the gun up. Sterling was the first guy really willing to come up and go like, hey, great. We'll try this idea. Clint Smith is a Marine. He's a firearms trainer. He is someone with over 40 years of experience, having built and designed over 18 different ranges. The man's done it all. Did he tell you about the rumor that he heard? What's that? That this is the last class that Clint's going to teach after the Air 3 Thunder Ranch experience. And I'm like, what? Like, where did you hear that? And he's like, oh, that's like the new online room <laughs> going around. He's like, this is the last class he's ever teaching, and it's for Air 3. <laughs> Clint and I have worked together for many years in weapons development. Because he's not going to retire until he dies. But he won't die because he's like Chuck Norris and he's going to live forever. This whole lightweight rifle thing has always been one of his goals. And when we started Era 3 and knew that we would be having rifles as one of our product lines, I literally took everything he said to heart and I think we created exactly what he was after. I really do like all these titanium parts, man. They're awesome. Dude, he wanted to do that for so long. Mm -hmm. And they did a good job. The lightest weight rifle with the highest quality components I mean, the whole thing itself is like five pounds, four ounces. Most rifles by themselves weigh no less than seven, eight pounds. Two, three extra pounds when you're carrying it all day is a lot, especially for somebody of my stature. And then for somebody like Clint, you know, he has been through life and he's like Iron Man, like titanium neck, titanium knee, like everything's busted. Like he doesn't want to be packing around a big heavy gun. Like it, it hurts him. Safe. Fire. Seems to work. <laughs> That's not funny, but kind of. ARs, they're not as complex as people think. It's sort of like a Lego set for men. It's crazy how these things are so simple, you know? 
each part holds the next part in. It's just totally wild. In the short time Era 3 has been around, we've gained a lot of attention for the guns we manufacture and build. Our secret weapon are the mentors I've been lucky to have. One amazing gunsmith that's helped along the way is my good friend Kevin Wyatt, a man who's learned the ropes through over 40 years of trial and error, and he's been generous with both his time and talent. I really do appreciate all of this. You know, I can go back to that, that first 18 inch 30 out six you built me when I was 19 years old. Right. For a 19 year old to walk in my shop and want to order a custom rifle that's $4,000, the first thing that enters your mind is okay, this kid's got passion, but can he really step up to the plate and buy a $4,000 rifle? We sat down, we worked out the bugs in it, and then the next thing out of your mouth was you wanted to buy two. You wanted one for you and one for your dad. And I just yeah. thought that was just really cool. Yeah. Kev has just been a tremendous help just plethora of knowledge and continues to share that that allows me now to actually build a few rifles, which is cool. It was pretty clear that we can't build guns on our own. He asked me if I would help him with any firearms questions he had, and I told him, I said, I'll help you to the ends of the earth. It really pleases me to be able to help you because, you know, I'm getting older and anything that I can pass on to somebody is just, especially someone that's got the desire that you do. I mean, it just, it really helps both of us, helps the whole industry. I realized that there was parts of my knowledge that I was willing to give him that I wouldn't give anybody else because I'm trying to help him start this company up. And I'd like to see it succeed. All right, I'll see All you right, soon. Man. Yep. Okay, thanks. Johnny Primo. Primiano. I think that's his real name. But he goes by Primo, which is stellar. Johnny told us about this 24-hour sniper challenge he was doing. We thought it'd be a great opportunity to sort of showcase our rifle building skills by sponsoring Johnny with a rifle. Check him out. Hey, buddy. I'm super excited to build this rifle for Johnny. Since he's joining us for the Thunder Ranch experience, I'd really like to surprise him. The only thing left to do is everything. This guy's gonna travel 25 plus miles on foot, right? With a heavy pack. And not only does he have to accomplish that mission, but he has to shoot straight and get it done. At the end of the day, it's a sniper comp. Uh, he chose this caliber, 6.5 Creedmoor. He's gonna be shooting up to and beyond 1,000 yards. The choice of weapon is really, uh, really key. It's short, it's compact, it's light, and most of all, it's accurate. Clearly, a 20-inch 6.5 Creedmoor on a proof research barrel and carbon fiber stock, that's a rifle for Primo. This gun's a lot of fun, and you know we could paint my little ponies on it or something, right? It'd still be fun for, for Primo. It's a different type of pressure. Now it's for my friend. Now I want to build a rifle that impresses him, that, that he dominates with. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. Uh, we need to talk about the guns we're gonna build for Primo too. We gotta do something really crazy for Primo. Yeah. Something really bitching. Era 3 started for me when uh, Sterling came to my shop and he laid out his concept and his idea and I told him I wasn't gonna work for him. And he kind of looked at me and kind of giggled and said, what, you don't, you don't want the work? And I said, no, I want in. I wanna be a partner. So in a sense, I kind of came off and said, I'm gonna work harder for free than if I'm getting paid. <laughs> so if it's Primo's gun, should we do something like wacky? Well, yeah, so Primo's like gun. Like metallics Let's talk about that. Like glitter. Yeah. Yeah, the full on like the glitter. Version. We were standing around trying to figure out what, uh, what we were gonna roll on for paint with Johnny's rifle, right? And I don't know if it was Sherry or Jason, but one of them, uh, you know, just clicked and said, hey man, Let's match his car. Let's see, you got that 49 Ford or that 50 Absolutely. Ford. And was, I think that thing was like maroon and gold, gold scallops on it or something, if I remember oh, right. Oh, yeah. That would be so awesome. That would be bitching. Hot rod it out. Jason thought of it. Johnny's a hot rod guy, so we're going to paint it to match one of his cars. I already okay. got it. Check All it out. Right. So it, it's body color, then we okay. do like a nose cone color up here on mm -hmm. the outside, and then we'll just run a scallop here and then maybe pick up another one here. Okay. Johnny's a hot rod guy. And we like hot rods, right? He's not off tromping through the woods trying to be camouflage. He's out there to put a show on and race, you know? Yeah, I'm stoked. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay.
I'll cool. bust it out. I'll do it All tonight. Right. Well, I gotta get to work on tomorrow. It now, maybe maybe Sunday. Okay. <laughs>this whole sniper challenge that Johnny's after, I really like uh, the challenge that he's up against, physically, mentally. So when he told me that he and a partner were in pursuit of that title, first thing I said was, hey man, let's build you a couple rifles, right? Yesterday we fit the barreled action to the stock and uh, we glass threaded it. And now we're starting to clean that system up for a final assembly. No one's ever going to see this. No one would ever know what's underneath the gun, but it just makes me feel so good to like get it right. I'm stoked. That's, this one's turning out really good. There we have it, man, the Primo. We'll get it out of here and off to the paint booth, and hopefully it shoots straight. On the, uh, the back part of the stock, we're doing a scallop that is similar to Primo's 49 here with the way it goes around the wheel well and stuff. Wrapping it over the top and it'll be symmetrical design on the other side. So this shape here, as it kind of snakes through, it kind of comes down and snakes around. We've got a hot rod paint job on a 308 stock, which is gonna be bitching. Jason, he does some of the coolest stuff his artistic capabilities amaze me. He's way cooler than he thinks he is. Is it cool? Yeah, it's just before you came up with that new pattern. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. That's Looks cool. There's a big flag on the back. Yeah. Today we got a whole truckload of apparel in, so I decided to call in a local model I found to see if we could do a photo shoot. What are you gonna make this one look like? I think I'm just gonna do like a big boat neck and cut the sleeves off and just make it simple. Uh, Sherry, I'll tell you right now, Sherry's the brains behind the outfit. She won't acknowledge that, right? She'll laugh it off and all five, two of her bounces in the room at 105 pounds and, you know, she's dangerous. The last thing you want me in control of is social media, photography, or models for God's sake, right? I don't try to round up the girls too much. I just bring Sterling with me because it's like that concept. If you have like a baby or like a cute little puppy, the girls are like, oh, that's so cute. And then like they want to talk to you to like talk to your puppy and like play with it, but it doesn't always work. I'm way better at getting the chicks. Usually the best place to find these new girls is the coffee shops. I'm a barista at Dutch Bros. Sherry comes through and then she gave me her card and said, call me, I want to take some pictures of you. I think that my bizarre personality is ideal for our social media. And I realize that every time sometimes I let Sterling take over, it can be a little bland. That's a big one. So I sort of powerhoused him out of the way and just took charge anyways. I'm still teaching him how to, uh, how to be awesome. From before to after. <laughs> Not so bad. We finally got everything together and we're headed off to Thunder Ranch. It's time to let the guns speak for themselves. Thunder Ranch is awesome. When you show up on his range, you feel like you're the first person that's ever shot there. It's so clean, it's so immaculate. For those of you that have never experienced a class with Clint Smith, you're in for a big surprise because you never know what's gonna come out of his mouth. If it's the lunch break and the sky becomes full of Iranian paratroopers, load your shit up and go to work. <laughs> he could have his own comedy show in itself. It's just like a constant string of awesome quotes. You all know the marvel of engineering of the front drop landing craft like they use at Omaha Beach. You load a steel box full and then pull up on a beach covered by MG42, lower the gate, and get the shot out of yourself, right? Everybody remember that, Saving Private Ryan? That same marvel of engineering thought processes transfer it over to a five ounce toilet. A 200 pound turd is not gonna go down with five ounces of water, so if you put a B-52 strike on this thing, then go ahead and flush it a couple times, because if you don't, then the water comes in on the pergo floor. Ask me how I know. Then we're doing plumbing, not shooting. I'd rather be shooting than plumbing, so if you'd like, there you go. Please and thank you. This urban precision rifle course, AKA the Thunder Ranch experience for Air 3. Boy, it sounded really easy when we started talking about you know, putting a class together and, and building the rifles. And 
but I'll tell you, man, that was no small feat. What we're working on the next couple days is give you a piece of high-tech gear. I shot every one of your rifles. Those are balls on at 50, 75, and 100 with emergency sights. We didn't even got to the fancy glass yet. True or false? True. Yeah, right. <laughs> false. True. That's a test. There isn't anything about that package that we put together that I second guess. The guns are good. We got them, no problem. But the space shuttle blew up twice. They spent more money on that thing than they did on your rifle. There's no reason today to have a crappy gun and you're not getting one. Okay. It's really reassuring for us to have Clint like back up our product. Are you happy? Oh, these are. These are stunning. Right? One of the nicest AR I've ever held. It's gorgeous. We're going to suit up, get out on the range, and see if they go bang. One, treat the guns like they're loaded. Two, don't point the muzzle at anything you don't want to destroy. Three, keep your stinking finger off the trigger to be ready to go to work. But that said, when you get on target, get on trigger. Four, be sure of your target and backstop. Questions or problems? Cool. I'm not as eloquent as other people, but I don't need to be. I'm teaching fighting. I'm not teaching finger pain. Get your rifle loaded. Get your rifle loaded. Make sure you're ready to go. So we're going to knock down 12 people at the same time. They'll think a ton of brick had done fell upon them. And baby Jesus kicked them right square in the ball. Line's clear to fire now. You're trying to be present and run your own rifle and get the job done yet. I'm looking down the line at 12 other rifles that we had built and making sure that, you know, they were functioning and a little stressful. I want to go on to the flaming Buddhist monk and Saigon drill, but I cannot do that until all your rifles are zeroed. The school is just as much about thinking as it is about shooting. I want to be knowledgeable in their equipment and I need them to think. As far as trainers go, he's like top of the food chain. You know, you have great whites and a guppy fish. He's definitely a great white. Okay, when all else fails, read the manual. It'll tell you a lot of stuff, like how to adjust your scope. Guns are awesome. I'm in love. Clint instantly went from making sure the rifle shot straight and was going to hit the target to now we're going to go fight with it. So two, 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 basically back and forth five times, two rounds each step and then send your partner out. This one's mild compared to what's coming. So I need for you to get your head in what's going on here with no disrespect intended or implied. Get your guts behind cover there, Ranger! Get over, get over, get over! More, more, more! I don't want to carry your big ass off the battlefield. Quite nice out. I love the sound of gunfire in the morning. We shot out of the Terminator. That was cool. One of the uh, instructor guys behind me asked if I'd like to borrow his foot. So I gladly take his offer. Being short is awesome. We are going to take them now. They're rotating out. They're doing teams. And we're going to do a little like what we'll call jungle lane. But there's no jungle because we're in Oregon. So it'll be sort of like a tree lane. OK, we look for stuff, OK? Clint really has a way of humbling you and knocking you back a level and making you really pay attention to what you're doing. Like every type of shooting scenario that you could possibly think of putting yourself in, you can experience at Thunder Ranch. So the tip of the day is, is don't stand up in a rifle fight. Woo! <laughs> the course that Clint's got set up from, you know, shooting off barricades to off rocks, through a 55 gallon drum, and then to the back of a pickup bed. And then onto some swinging platform that he made. That, that was probably my favorite part. We're kind of all gun snobs here, so we're, we're used to high end stuff. Every time I look at it, I see a new little touch that they put in it. So I'm seeing a lot of the guys and gals in the rifle. It's pretty cool. I am really excited about Johnny getting the Primo, and I really just want to make sure that Sterling doesn't give it to him without me. I got you a little something. I was excited to hand it to him and 
send him on his way to uh, to be a winner. Are you kidding me, bro? Yeah. <laughs> the stock was legit. It, it is awesome. You know, Jason hand painting Primo up on the fore end and that custom touch is really cool. Oh, that's Sherry. Let me see a picture of Hot Rod. How's your Hot Rod looking in? You know, things got real quick when Clint said, hey, let's shoot that thing, and uh, Johnny laid it over the bench. I just want to see if it goes bang, man. I hadn't actually taken that gun to the range to test fire it, zero it. The paint was still wet, for God's sake, right? I mean, it was still gassing off. Two or three shots later, he rung steel at 700 yards, so that was cool. Johnny ended up getting on target way quicker than I had expected. <laughs> Clearly, the rifle was shooting straight. I think Sterling should shoot it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Primo is kind of a tough act to follow with a rifle, right? I mean, all your friends are there, and cameras are rolling, and Clint's there on the glass. Sterling had it so easy when Johnny handed over that rifle, and he won't admit it, but Johnny has it already pretty much dialed in for him. Thank you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Do you think you built some nice <laughs> now? I mean, truth is, I got lucky. We built the U.S. to win. I tried my hardest. Okay. Promise you went. Oh my gosh. Hmm. I think the secret to my success is to know people. Nothing that we have done or will do will be a solo act. We've got a tremendous support network, and without that, yeah, Era 3 doesn't exist. <laughs>